All right, guys. So the first thing I wanted to do is just look at our three most missed problems on the quiz from last time. Um, overall, we did super awesome on that quiz. There were just three problems that gave a few people some trouble, so I wanted to go over those. Um, number 12, we're determining the better buy. So before I can determine which one is the better deal, what do I need to find for each of those deals or those stores? Sorry, is that here? Bella, which, what do I have to find? What's vocab word for each of them? Can you tell me what you did with each of those? Like what operation? So number 12, I divided 5 plus 12. Good. So we would take that money, divide it by the unit. So we're finding the, what vocab word, if you know, just shout it out. Unit rate. Unit rate. Okay. So we find the unit rate for each of those, and then whichever one has the lower unit rate, we know is the better deal. Do I need to take my money first and then the units, or units divided by money? Money always comes first. So we would do $3.05 divided by 6, and $5.98 divided by 12. All right, can somebody divide that in your calculator for me? Three dollars and five cents divided by six. I know you probably don't remember off the top of your head what you got last time. Right. Orin, when did you get it? Uh, fifty-one cents. Fifty-one cents. So that would be fifty-one cents per whatever item they're selling. Okay. What about five dollars and ninety-eight cents divided by twelve? DJ. I'm sorry. What? Divided by 12? Okay, so is it 0 0.4983? Okay, so when we round that, we got 0 0.498. So our 8 is going to make our 9 round up, right? And that makes the 4 round up. So that one would be 50 cents per item. So that makes our 12 pack a better deal. It's one cent cheaper per item in the pack. So that's why we should have chosen B for that one. All right, for 13, Jeffrey can paint two thirds of the classroom in two hours. So we want to know how much he can paint in one hour. We're finding the unit range. So if I'm trying to figure out how many classrooms we can paint per one hour, what needs to go on top? My classrooms or the hours? Orin? Yeah, our classrooms would go on top. So we need the classroom over the number of hours. We know that he has two-thirds of the classrooms, and that's in two hours. We want to know how much he can paint in one hour. All right, so in order to find the amount of the classroom that he can paint in one hour, what do I need to do to both parts of that rate, Jordan? Divide by two, absolutely. Two divided by itself will give us one, so then I need to take two-thirds and divide it by two also. If I'm dividing that fraction by a whole number, what do I want to do with this 2 right here? Put it over 1. And then whenever I'm dividing fractions, I have to do? Heat change flip. So that would be 2 thirds times 1 half. And if I multiply straight across, 2 times 1 gives me 2. 3 times 2 gives me 6. So I get 2 6, but that would simplify to what? 1 third. So he can paint one-third of the classroom per hour. All right, and then number 14 was another most missed. It takes one-sixth of an hour to run two and one-third miles. So we want to know the unit rate in miles per hour. All right, so if I'm looking for miles per hour, what needs to go on top? My miles or my hours, Rebecca? Miles would go on top, absolutely. So we're going to have miles over hours. We know that it took one-sixth of an hour. So 
So does this one six need to go on top or the bottom? Bottom, because that's where our hours go. And then that was two and one third miles. So I've got two and one third over one six, and I want it to become one hour. So in order to change that one six into a one, what do I need to do to both parts of my rate, Kaylee? Yeah, we're dividing by one six, which is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is six. So we're taking two and one third divided by one six. Whenever I have a mixed number, I want to change it into a improper fraction. Improper fraction. So that would be seven thirds. And then Kaylee told us dividing by one six is going to be the same thing as just multiplying by six over one. And then we're going to multiply straight across. Seven times six is forty-two. And three times one is three. And then I think that can be simplified. Can I divide forty-two by three? Yeah. Yes. And I should get what? 14. 14. So 14 miles per hour. I did see a lot of people had the reciprocal, which is 1 14th. So that just means you forgot to multiply by the reciprocal when you were dividing right here. You probably multiplied by 1 6 instead of 6 over 1. Either that or you had your hours over your miles instead of miles over hours. Those two mistakes would give you 1 over 14 instead of 14 over 1. All right, so grades for the quiz have been in power school since Friday. Like I said, most of them were really good. I just wanted to talk about those three problems. All right, guys, we do have a new Eduelastic homework 4.2 that opened this morning. So for A day, it's going to be due on the 27th. That's next Wednesday. And for B day, it's going to be due next Thursday, the 28th. Okay, so today we're moving on from ratios and unit rates and all that, and we're going to use those things to figure out whether two quantities are in a proportional relationship. So we've got Sarah, and she's playing a game on her phone, and she's awarded with Game Live, so that's these little hearts, when she finds gold coins. So it says, how is the number of game lives awarded related to the number of gold coins found? So then we've got some hints to help us kind of set it up. So what two things are we comparing here, DJ? Coins to what? Okay, and then ask us to write the three ratios. So in my first picture here, how many coins did she find? Three. Three. And how many lives did she earn? Nine. Nine. In my second picture, she found how many coins? Two. Two and earned how many lives? Six. Okay. And then in my third picture, she found how many coins? Five coins and that gave her how many lives? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. That's one. Okay, so my three ratios are 3 to 9, 2 to 6, and 5 to 15. Are those ratios equivalent? Yes. Carter, how do you know they're equivalent? Because uh, every single one is equivalent. Gotcha. So we. Carter said we can multiply by three. What are you multiplying by three to get the other thing? Yeah, in each one we're multiplying the number of coins by three to get the number of lives. So three times three gives us nine for our first ratio. Two times three gives us six. And five times three gives us 15. So all those ratios are equivalent because all of them she earns how many lives per coin? Three. For every coin that she finds, she earns three lives. So I'm just going to say yes, three lives per coin. So they've got that same relationship in all three ratios. Okay, 
So a proportional relationship is where all the ratios that compare the two quantities are equivalent. So if you have a set of ratios and they're all equivalent, we say that they are in proportion to each other or they're proportional. So here, we've got some pictures and they've been written as ratios for us. What two things are we comparing in those pictures? Yeah, yellow circles to blue circles. So I'm just going to write yellow to blue. <laughs> and then ask, are the ratios equivalent? So we got 1 to 2 equals 2 to 4 equals 3 to 6. Are all of those ratios equivalent? Okay. So how do you know they're equivalent, DJ? Yeah, for every yellow circle, there's two blue. So they all have that same relationship between the yellow circles and the blue circles, so that makes them equivalent. So therefore, they would be proportional. So we have three main methods of determining whether ratios are proportional or not. So the first thing we can do is just simplify the ratios. So I'm going to look at my table that I've been given. It's talking about heartbeats per second. So it's saying that in 20 seconds, we have 22 heartbeats. In 15 seconds, our friend has 18 heartbeats. We're trying to figure out if those ratios are equivalent. So the first method is to simplify the ratios. So for us, I'm just going to put heartbeats over seconds. So for our ratio, it's 22 heartbeats in how many seconds? 20. And for our friend, they have 18 heartbeats in how many seconds? 50. All right, let's simplify both of those ratios. So 22 and 20, what can they both be divided by? 2. 22 divided by 2 would give us what? 11 and 20 divided by 2, of course, would give us 10. So our ratio simplifies to 11 heartbeats per 10 seconds. Our friends, if we have 18 over 15, what can both of those quantities be divided by? 3. 18 divided by 3 would give me? 6. And 15 divided by 3 would give me? So our friends ratio simplifies to six heartbeats for five seconds. Are those two ratios equivalent? No. So pretty much if you simplify them and you don't get the exact same thing, then they're not equivalent. So we would say that those are not proportional. Now our second method is to find the unit rate. So that would mean how many heartbeats per one second for both people. So we would still have heartbeats over second. And then I'm going to say for you, it's 22 heartbeats per 20 seconds. So we want to know how many heartbeats per one second. What do I need to divide both parts of that ratio by in order to find the number of heartbeats per second? 20. All right, and we're probably going to get a decimal for this, that's okay. When I divide 22 by 20, 1.1, so our unit rate is 1.1 heartbeats per second. Let's look at our friend. So our friend's ratio was 18 heartbeats over 15 seconds. So if we're finding their number of heartbeats per second, what do I need to divide both parts of that ratio by? 15. 
Okay, and once again, we're going to get a decimal. That's okay. What do we get when we divide 18 by 15? 1.2. 1.2. So do we have the same unit rate as our friend? No. No, their heart's being a little bit faster than ours. So we would say our heart rates are not proportional. Okay, and then the third method, which is probably the most popular, is to cross multiply. This is a lot like the butterfly method that you learned in elementary school when you were trying to decide if two fractions were equivalent. Because we know ratios can be written as fractions, therefore we can use that same method to determine if they're equivalent. So, if we've got our two ratios, let's see, ours was 22 heartbeats in 20 seconds, and then our friends with 18 heartbeats in 15 seconds. What you would do is take your numbers that are diagonally across from each other. So we would multiply 22 times 15. We all do that in your calculators for me. You tell me what you get. 330. Okay, so 22 times. 22 times 15 gives me 330. And then we also need to multiply 20 times 18 since they're diagonal from each other. 360. Okay, so if we got 330 and 360, is that the same number? So if your cross products are not the same, that means those ratios are not equivalent. They're not so using all three methods, we got that they are not proportional. You can use any of those three to determine if two ratios are proportional. You can simplify, find the unit rate, or cross multiply. Okay. So now we want to know if the ratio or the relationship between the area and the side length of the squares is proportional. So it's kind of walking us through it. So let's first make a table, which they've kind of set up for us. We want to find the ratio of area to side length for each pair. Okay, so let's look at our squares over here. For this first little square, where my side lengths are 2 inches, so side length is going to be 2. So we can fill that in for our first x value. How do I find the area of any square or rectangle? Length times width. Length times width. Which, if it's a square, all sides are going to be what? The same. The same. So, to find that area, we would just be multiplying 2 mm -hmm. times 2, right? Which would give us what for that area? 4. Okay? And when you're finding your unit rate, we always do y over x. This is something that's going to be very important as we move on with unit 4. So if I take y over x, my area over my side length, 4 divided by 2, what does that give me for that square? Um, 2, 2. Okay, so our unit rate for that square is 2. Let's look at our next square. I'm going to change colors for it. So my side length is 3. What would my area be for that square? Nine. And then I'm dividing y by x, the area by the side length. So 9 divided by 3 is going to give me what for that square? 3. three. So unit rate for the middle square is 3. All right, and then my last square where my side length is 4, we can fill that in for x. So area is going to be what? 16. And then I'll take that area divided by the side length, so that's going to give me four. four. All right, so there's definitely a pattern here, but are we getting the exact same unit rate for all of them? No. So are those squares proportional to each other? No. So we would say they're not proportional because of the unit rate. They're not the same.
Okay, last slide on the front side of our paper. So a proportion is an equation that represents two equal ratios. So we're looking at the table on the right. We want to know how many times a hummingbird will beat its wings in 60 seconds. So when given the table, we want to verify that all ratios are proportional. Now, we just saw in our squares that when we're finding the unit rate and deciding if the table's proportional, we always need to put what over what? Y over X. Y over X. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to divide the wing beats, since that's Y, by the seconds, which is X for all of them. Okay, so when I divide 160 by 2, what does that give me? 80. 80. So this one's going to be 80 wing beats per second. What about 560 divided by 7? 80 again. So far, so good. And what about 800 divided by 10? 80. 80. So, would we say that this table is proportional? Yes. yes. We got the same unit rate for all three ratios. Okay, number two, we're going to write and solve a proportion. So, a proportion is just two ratios that are equal to each other. So, if we're trying to figure out how many times a hummingbird will beat its wings in 60 seconds. We always put y over x. So let's start out with that on your paper. Just put y over x. Our y in our table represents what in words? Wing beats. So I know I'm going to have wing beats over seconds. And then, for your first ratio, you can pick any one that you already know. So let's just pick one from our table. Why don't we just do the very first one, since those numbers are the smallest. So our first ratio tells us that we have how many wing beats in how many seconds? 160 wing beats in 2 seconds. Okay, and then we want to know how many times they're going to beat their wings in 60 seconds. So it's a little different. We've been changing this bottom quantity to 1 so far because we've only been finding unit rates. This time we're trying to find a different equivalent ratio. So we learned back in Unit 3 that whenever we're trying to find something that we don't know, what do we use in math to represent an unknown quantity? A variable. So, usually we use x, but in this case, what should we probably use as our variable since we've already set it up? y. Okay, and then from here, you can kind of use some mental math. If I'm creating an equivalent ratio, and I know I've gone from 2 seconds to 60 seconds, What am I doing with that 2 to turn it into a 60? Multiplying it by 80. Multiplying it by what now? Uh, 80. Mm. What can we multiply 2 by to make it 60? 30. 30. 30. So times 30, and that means we would have to do what to 160? Multiply it by 30. <laughs> okay, so what is 160 times 30? We might have to bust out our calculators for that. 4,800. 4, so the bird would beat its wings 4,800 times in 60 seconds. So you set it up using a ratio that you know and then kind of use those properties of equivalent ratios to find your missing value. So it's just kind of combining things that we've already talked about. Right, on our next slide on the back, all we're doing is telling whether those ratios are proportional. So you can use any of those three methods that we talked about a couple of slides ago. We can simplify the ratios, we can find the unit rate, or we can cross multiply. So if I've got 3 over 4 and 24 over 18, 
take a look at that and give me a thumbs up if you think you know what method you want to use to figure out if those are proportional. There's no right or wrong answer. Right, and now, which method would you like to use? The multiply method. Okay, so cross multiplying. Which usually, if your ratios are set up as fractions, it does lead itself pretty well to cross multiplying because they're already set up that way for you. So if we have 3 over 4 and 24 over 18, what do I need to multiply my 3 by? 18. 18. And then I would multiply the 4 by what? 24. Okay, so let's multiply those cross products. So 3 times 18 would give me what? 54. 54. And 4 <clears throat> times 24 is going to give me? 96. 96. All right. So are those cross products equal? No. No. And if they're not equal, are those ratios going to be proportional? No. no. So those two ratios would not be proportional. Okay, number two, since we've got a table and there's several ratios in there, take a look at that and give me a thumbs up if you think you know what method would be the easiest for this one. Or uh, finding the unit rate. We could find the unit rate. Either finding the unit rate or simplifying would work pretty well if you have a table. So we learned that if we're finding the unit rate, you always divide what by what. Uh, y by x, good enough. So we would do 5 divided by 2 for this first ratio. What does that give me for that unit rate? 2.5. And then we would do 10 divided by 4. 2.5 again. 15 divided by 6. 2.5. And 20 divided by 8. All right, so since all of those have the same unit rate, are they proportional? Yes. yes. We also could have simplified them. What would 4 tenths or 4 over 10 simplify to? 2 over 5. What would 6 over 15 simplify to? 2 over 5 again. What about 8 over 20? 2 over 5 because they can both be divided by 4. So either unit rates or simplifying would work really well for number 2. All right, number 3, we've got 440 calories in 4 servings and 300 calories in 3 servings. You know what, guys? I'm actually going to let y'all do number 3 and number 4 on your own, just determining if they're proportional or not. So, I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do that. If you're watching the video, press pause and then press play when you're ready to go over it.
because I've got 440 calories in four servings, 300 calories in three servings. Cameron, what method did you use to determine if those were proportional? Did you simplify them? Did you find the unit rate? Or did you cross multiply? And Cameron, there's no right or wrong answer. Why don't you just pick one of those? Do you want to simplify, find the unit rate, or cross multiply them? Um, cross multiply. Okay, if we cross multiply, then I probably need to set up those ratios as fractions first, which we can totally do. You can always write a ratio as a fraction. So we would have 440 calories over four servings, 300 calories over three servings. Right, so then Cameron, what would I need to multiply 440 by if I'm cross multiplying? Um, three. Yes. And what would I need to multiply 4 by? 300. Good. Okay, so will you do that for me? What is 440 times 3? Right. 440 times 3. You have your calculator? Come on, Ben. Okay, you got there. Someone help him out. What is 440 times 3? Go ahead, Addie. 1,320. 1,320. Okay, and then I need 4 times 300. What is that going to give me? 1,200. Alright, guys, so are those cross products the same? So are those really like are those ratios going to be proportional? No. Did anyone find unit rates for both of those? Jordan, what did you get for those two unit rates? Gotcha. So 440 and four would be 110 calories per serving, and 303 would be 100 calories per serving. So they don't have the same unit rate either. And then did anybody simplify the ratios? Okay, that's fine if you didn't. This one kind of led itself to unit rates really well because a lot of times we talk about calories per serving and then you also could cross multiply. You could have simplified too. So anyway, you should have gotten that they are not proportional. All right, for number four, we can do 90 sit-ups in two minutes and our friend can do 135 sit-ups in three minutes. Are those rates proportional? All right, so, Addie, what method did you use to figure out if they were proportional or not? I don't really know how to explain it, but I knew that I did 90 divided by 2, uh -huh. and then I got uh, 45, and I just kept, like, multiplying 45 by, like, 1, 2, 3, and then I went on, and I found uh, 135 was 3 minutes. Gotcha. So then I went from there, and I said yes, it was proportional. Gotcha. So you found the unit rate, Addie. That's totally fine. We can do 90 divided by 2. That's going to give us 45 sit-ups per minute. And then 135 divided by 3. Would that also give us 45 sit-ups per minute? Yes. So they have the same unit rate. Therefore, they are proportional. Okay, so then our follow-up question says, how many sit-ups could you do in 7 minutes? Anaya, how would we figure that out? Um, okay, Addie, you can go ahead. Um, I knew it was 45, and it said in 7 minutes, so I did 45 times 7, and I got 350. Absolutely. If 45 sit-ups per minute is our unit rate, we can take 45 and multiply it by 7 minutes, and you say you got how many sit-ups, Addie? 315. 315. So 315 sit-ups in 7 minutes is correct. So once you find that unit rate, you can kind of find any other equivalent ratio. Alright guys, how are we feeling about this? Just determining if two ratios are proportional. Cross multiplying, unit rate, or simplifying. Are we good on all three of those methods? 
All right, now we've got Jenny's favorite cookie recipe. It requires one and a half cups of sugar to make 24 cookies. She decides she wants to make 36 cookies, so therefore she will need 2.25 cups of sugar. Is she correct or not? All right, I'm gonna take, give you all a few minutes to think about this one. If it requires one and a half cups of sugar for 24 cookies, would it require 2.25 to make 36 and y'all can talk about this with your group even if you're watching this on the video for b-day if you want to whisper with the people around you with this problem that is fine First thing that I would probably ask myself on this problem is what two things are we comparing? So what are those two things, Carter? Oh. <clears throat> well, we're comparing one number. Because we're comparing two numbers. Yeah. So how much cookies we can make and what? The, um, yeah. So cookies to sugar. Alright, so we know that we can make, or that it requires one and a half cups to make 24 cookies. So where does my one and a half need to go in that ratio, and I top or bottom? Um, the bottom. Bottom, because I want to line it up with my sugar. And since it's one and a half, and my other number was given as a decimal, can't I change that one and a half to a decimal also, just to make my life a little bit easier? One and a half we know is equivalent to what decimal? 1.5. Okay, and that makes how many cookies? 24. Okay, and then we know, or we want to know, how much or how much sugar it's going to take for her to make 36 cookies. So we're changing those cookies from 24 to 36. And we want to know if 2.25 would be the right amount of sugar. Okay, so if you're cooking, Carter, what needs to be true about those ratios if we're trying to make the same recipe? They, have to have the same they would need to have the same unit rate. They would need to be proportional. You can't just change up your relationship between the sugar and the cookies. It's not going to taste the same. So we want those ratios to be proportional. So Carter, you found the unit rates for both of them? All right, so for 24 cookies and 1.5 cups of sugar, what was that unit rate? Uh, I said 16. Right. What now? 16. 16? Or, um, so did you divide 24 by 1.5? Okay. So we would get 16 cookies per one cup of sugar, right? Right, and then Carter, when you divided 36 by 2.25, what did you get? Uh, 
You got 16 again? All right, so 16 cookies per one cup of sugar. All right, so we can divide those to find the unit rate, and for both of them, we get that we would have 16 cookies per cup of sugar. So is that relationship proportional? Yes. So would that be the correct amount of sugar that she needs? So we would just say yes, the ratios are proportional. Okay, and then number five, we've got a specific shade of red nail polish that requires seven parts red to two parts yellow. A mixture contains 35 quarts of red and eight quarts of yellow. So we want to know how we can fix the mixture to make the correct shade of red. So it's pretty much telling us that these are not proportional. We've got seven parts red to two parts blue, I mean, excuse me, yellow. And then in our new mixture, we've got 35 parts red and eight parts yellow. All right, so we know that this does not work because 7 times 8, if I do that cross product, what does that give me? 56. 56. 2 times 35 70. gives me 70. So those cross products are not the same, therefore it's not proportional. I want to know how I can fix this to make the correct shade of red. So I need to change something about this second ratio. Rebecca, what do you think? Um, Times four, six. Uh huh. So, gotcha. So she's saying that seven times five would give me thirty-five. If I'm just kind of creating an equivalent ratio, which we learned in our previous lessons that you can just multiply both quantities by the same thing. If I multiply seven times five to get thirty-five, what would I need to multiply two by? Five. five. We've got to multiply both parts by the same thing. So two times five would not give me eight. It would give me what? Ten. ten. So instead of eight quarts of yellow, I need ten quarts of yellow. And then that would be proportional because then we would have seven times ten, which would give me what for that cross product? Two. Seventy, which is what we needed because two times thirty-five gave me seventy. We want those ratios to be equivalent, so Rebecca just made sure she multiplied both quantities by the same thing in order to make them equivalent. Yeah, when we've got those small numbers, it's easy to see what we need to multiply. All right, does that make sense, everyone? Anyone have a question about that? All right. Last slide on our notes for today. So we say each triangle is equilateral. What does that mean for triangles to be equilateral? All the sides are equal. So like in this first little triangle, every side is one inch. In this triangle, every side is two inches. And in the third triangle, every side is three inches. It asks, is the relationship between the perimeter and the side length proportional? Okay, so thinking back to that problem with the squares where we were talking about area and side length, what did we create when we were trying to figure out if all of those were proportional? A table. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to let side length be our x. <coughs> And then I need, is it asking for area this time? What is it asking for instead of area? Perimeter. Perimeter. So perimeter is going to be my Y. And then my last column, looking back at that slide with the squares, what did we have in our last column to determine if they were proportional? Alright guys, look back. That means flip your paper back over. 
look at the ones I was talking about, the squares, where we had the three little squares and we made a table. What, Rebecca? A fraction, but what were we dividing to make those fractions? Yeah, we need perimeter over side length. In the square problem, we did area over side length, y over x. So we're still going to do y over x for this column, but in this case, it's going to be perimeter over side length. We're finding those unit rates to see if they're equivalent. Okay, so I've got my table set up. For my first triangle, the side lengths are what? One inch. So, to find the perimeter, I do what with all of my sides? Add them all. Add them all. So, one plus one plus one would give me three. And then, I'm going to do y over x. So, three divided by one gives me what? Three. Three. Okay. So, the unit rate for that triangle is three. For my next triangle, what's my side length? Two. Two inches. So what would the perimeter be? Six. Yes, two plus two plus two would give me six. And then I'm going to divide y by x, so six divided by two, and that gives me what for my unit rate? Three. Three. Okay. And then my third triangle, what are my side lengths? Three. So therefore my perimeter would be? Nine. Nine. And then I'm going to do perimeter over side length, so 9 over 3, 3. So yeah, the perimeter is proportional to the side length. So we would just say all unit rates equal 3. Okay, so that finishes out our notes for today. If you are watching the video in my B-Day classes, you'll need to follow the directions in Canvas. You've got an online assignment to complete and then a worksheet to complete. So make sure you get both of those completed and submitted by the end of class.